Claus is probably the icon of Christmas, which is ironic since the holiday is supposed to be the celebration of the Christian religion's birth of Christ. It's there in the name even. And while Santa himself came out of the story of an actual saint, St. Nicholas, whose roots were set in Turkey in 280 AD, Santa wasn't alone, it would seem, in his duties as a sort of horseman of Christmas. Santa had a partner, a friend, who did the very dirty work when it came to the naughty side of his list. By this point, you've probably seen the weird, furry devil creature who's been slowly taking over the holiday on novelty ugly sweaters, Christmas cards, and a whole lot of media. Krampus is his name, and he's most assuredly from the dark side of the Yule Log. Krampus has been around for centuries, but he's only very recently hit the mainstream. The story behind him and what he does adds a whole other level to the warnings of, you better be good. You seriously don't want Krampus coming down your chimney. On this episode of Myth 3's, we're getting in on the holiday mood with Santa's furry friend with the bag over his shoulder that doesn't have toys in it. Oh no! Those are screams. Grab that cocoa and hold on tight as we talk Krampus. Let me take this opportunity to thank you for watching Myth Threes and ask that if you enjoy our shows, please subscribe to our channel right now. Like this video and click on the bell so you can be notified each time a new video goes up. Now, back to the show. Christmas and the holiday season are a joyful time of year filled with bright lights, family coming together, and the rewards of a year well-lived appearing in the form of festive presents under a brightly lit tree. But over the last decade, the world has come to know the darker side of the holiday season, one that's actually been there for a very long time. Krampus, the horned and furry helper of Santa slash Saint Nick, has been around since the 12th century, but his story began much earlier than that. Like many of the traditions that mark Christmas, Krampus was taken from the old Nordic and pagan religions and meshed into the traditions of the Christian holiday. One taken from these stories is that Krampus, whose name is taken from the German word Krampen, which means claw, is that Krampus is actually the son of Hel, Nordic god of the underworld or land of the dead. Krampus, like most of the deities who have some connection to the land of the dead, his main drive is about punishment of the wicked. Krampus's job is to punish the wicked children of the world on Krampus night, which falls on December 5th, the day before the Feast of St. Nicholas. Krampus's appearance harkens very strongly to the Christian version of the devil, with cloven feet, horns, a long pointed tongue, fur, and of course clawed hands. He's very goat-like, something else which was taken from Nordic belief with the Yule Goat, which was taken from pagan beliefs that used a white goat as representative of a god during their celebrations of that time of the year. The Yule Goat would deliver presents, and there would be some believers who would dress as the Yule Goat to deliver the gifts. Costumes and dressing as Krampus would become part of his story as well. Krampus seems to be very connected to, or very similar to, many beliefs and typically fearful creatures of folklore and religion. But in some cases, these creatures aren't frightening, such as the previously mentioned Yule Goat. There's the Horn God, which is part of the Wiccan belief, which is also seen as the Holly King, the representation of winter. Krampus's origins in Nordic belief can also be connected to Thor, who had two goats that pulled his chariot. There's also the Polish pagan-inspired Turin, who was a bringer of fertility as well. This creature looks like a bull and dances, making the rounds with carolers, with someone dressed up as the creature. He comes from a belief that the Auric, a now extinct wild ox from Europe, as a god represented the sun, and a new sun is given to us around Christmas time. Krampus, though, is a strange combination of light and dark. He's considered a comrade and friend of St. Nicholas, and his duties are interesting to say the least. On Krampus Nacht, or Krampus Night, which falls on December 5th, Krampus and St. Nicholas go about visiting the children. If the children are good, St. Nicholas gives them presents. But if they've been bad, Krampus gets to work. Krampus carries a bag across his back that he will place the children in, and in some cases, take them to hell. Or, depending on what you believe, eat them. He also carries a collection of birch branches, which he uses to punish the children that have been bad by swatting them. Krampus is seen in many images with chains and bells detached to him. He can use the chains to announce his coming by whipping them about, along with the bells. The next day is the Feast of St. Nicholas, and if the children are the lucky ones, they get their presents, or at least are still breathing, albeit sore, and not in the pit of damnation, or Krampus's stomach. Krampuslof, aka the Krampus Run, is a sort of demonic-looking sort of pub crawl that involved dressing up to look like Krampus, 
horns and all, as it was tradition to offer Krampus schnapps. Think of it as an adult trick-or-treating with everyone wearing a demon costume and getting tanked. These traditions were a part of the Austrian culture for centuries, but in the early 1900s, the government decided that Krampus was not the sort of thing the public should be celebrating as the Fatherland Front took over, a fascist and conservative movement. Sound familiar? It banned Krampus and all the celebrations attributed to him. Krampus was simply too heavy metal for them, but as we all know, you can't keep the devil at bay for too long, and Santa's hard-rocking cousins started to reemerge towards the end of the last century. Krampus Night and the Krampus Run started being celebrated again, and then Krampus made the move to the U.S. In the early 2000s, Krampus started catching the eyes and imaginations of many thanks to a collection of postcards featuring the furry helper of Santa and deliverer of punishment for those who were naughty from artist Monty Beauchamp. A few years later, the artist Brahm released the beautiful graphic novel called Krampus the Yule Lord. It wasn't long until many cities across the U.S. joined the traditions of those in other parts of the world, starting their own Krampus Night and Krampus Run, with intricate and beautifully terrifying costumes showing their creator's own interpretations of Krampus. There are many of these, such as the one in Portland, Oregon, that happen annually. Musicians joined in, and soon you had videos like the fantastically weird and wonderful Krampus Christmas by Huizinga and Hard Place showing up to fascinate those of us who know what is awesome and freak out those who have no idea what they are witnessing. Of course, this pop culture takeover to the dark side of Christmas had to have its share of movies, and Krampus has managed to have a number of them over the years feature his story. There's even been one with a sequel. One of the first films to gain notoriety and feature Krampus though he's not outrightly called Krampus, is 2010's Rare Exports, A Christmas Tale. It features elves who are working in service to a large, frozen, horned, and furry beast. The monster is, of course, Krampus, and it creates a neat mythology for how the beast is connected to Santa. It also just looks beautiful. In 2013, Krampus the Christmas Devil was released. It's a low-budget horror film that follows a now grown-up boy who was abducted by Krampus when he was younger. He discovers the abductions and murders are still continuing. He's now a cop and is determined to stop them from happening. The film was followed up three years later with Krampus the Devil Returns. Once again, another policeman is on the trail of the aforementioned returning Krampus to put a stop to the abduction of children. Krampus the Reckoning was released in 2015 and featured voodoo now being mixed in with Krampus' story. This time a little girl was in charge of Krampus, befriending him and having him kill those who made her unhappy. The CGI Krampus is an interesting choice. 2015 was a big year for Krampus at the movies. That year, Krampus would be seen in A Christmas Horror Story, an anthology film which features William Shatner as a DJ interconnecting the stories, one of which features Santa Claus taking on an icy version of Krampus in a very cool scene. No pun intended. But the biggie that year was Mike Doherty's Krampus, which was a major studio release and had a budget of $15 million. I believe you could add all the budgets from every other Krampus film made, and they'd not add up to that. The film starred Tony Collette and Adam Scott. The plot centered on a young boy whose dysfunctional family is forced together at Christmas and causes him to lose his love of the holiday. His loss of faith in the holiday calls down a very large and creepily designed Krampus and his minions, who proceed to terrorize him and his family who learn they already had a connection to the mythic beast. There would be a comic book tie-in and merchandise all over for the film as well. Krampus Unleashed would follow in 2016, but the story, which deals with Krampus being unearthed and set free to rain down bloody havoc, isn't the best. Although the effects are an improvement with what appears to be a prosthetic-driven design over the other small-budgeted releases. One of the more recent entries is Krampus Origins, which is set during the time of World War I and has Krampus once again being accidentally unleashed upon the world by a group of soldiers. The item which unleashes the monster is sent to an orphanage and all holly hell, that is a pun, comes down on the nuns and the children in their care. If you are interested in watching any of these films, a large number of them are available for free on Tubi right now. Krampus is something of an enigma in the halls of Christmas and the Yule time. He's sort of a necessary evil, I suppose, but I'm once again intrigued by how so many beliefs can be so similar and yet spread out around the world. It makes you wonder who made who. Krampus is, if you go by the age of some of this lore, older than Santa Claus and has been around longer. And he's never really went away, even when they tried to keep him buried and labeled him as, well, evil. 
He's the boogeyman, the warning that we seem to always need in order to get the naughty kids to behave and to listen. And well, if they don't, bells aren't necessarily a good thing to hear ringing on Christmas Eve, I suppose.